Hey guys, Chunji here with the third installment of the Binding Cold Bahamut, Turn 4. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video, and instead of just giving you a ton of information right off the bat, I'm actually going to break down each phase of this turn with you as my raid does it, as well as give you some general tips and hints with Dragoon playstyle. So, what you need to know about this turn is that there's six phases in total, and in each phase you get one minute to complete it before the next phase begins. That means, if you don't kill the first phase within one minute, you'll have the first and second phase to deal with, and that can be a huge issue since this fight is a huge DPS race. Now, with this first phase, you're going to have six clockwork bugs, and each bug can heal themselves for a small percentage of their health with a special attack. So what you need to do is you need to AoE the crap out of these six. So you need to group these bugs up as close as possible and be getting the AoE. Even our healers are AoEing with us. What I like to do as a Dragoon is I'll start out with a Heavy Thrust, followed by a Ring of Thorns, into Doom Spike Spam until I get it to approximately 500 TP, where I use Invigorate to get full TP. Now, once you get back down to 500 TP, however, you need to stop AoEing and go back to True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust combo, interlacing Leg Sweep. Because if you do not, you're going to run the risk of running out of TP and not having any TP for the next phases, which will be a huge issue for you. Now. I chose this specific clip because our group actually failed to AoE correctly, which made it so that Clockwork Bugs join us into the next phase. But I also wanted to show you that it's okay that this happens if you are aware that your DPS is high enough to complete this entire turn. Now, what I like to do if we did not fail to do this is I like to stand over into the northwest corner where the main tank is going to be and the northeast corner is where the off tank is going to be. The reason I start in the west northwest corner is because you need to kill these clockwork knight and soldier before the next phase begins and you'll see why in a moment. Now the reason you have your main tank in the northwest corner and your off tank in the northeast corner is because the next phase, phase three, you're going to have a huge dreadnought which your main tank is going to need to pick up. Now, I like to pop all of my cooldowns as soon as this phase 2 starts, and we start with a knight because our entire group consists of physical DPS. Now, the reason we do this is because all knights reflect magic damage. However, it does not reflect bane from summoners. And both of these also have shields. The soldiers have a physical damage shield, and the knights have a magic resist shield. Now, once you break these shields, the soldier and knight will become stunned. This stun lasts approximately 10 seconds, so you need to kill them within this 10 seconds or their shield will regenerate and you're going to have to break back through their shield. And these shields are pretty hefty. What we like to do in my raid is that once we break the shield of the first soldier and it gets to approximately 50%, one of our bards actually switches over to the next knight. Now, once we get both of these down, we switch directly back over the dreadnought and by this point, both our buffs are almost back up. For me, it's in a release and blood for blood. If you're not confident in having your buffs up by this point, save your buffs for the dreadnoughts specifically, because if you do not kill these dreadnoughts in a certain amount of time, the next phase will begin and they'll eat a bug. Now, in this third phase, a dreadnought will spawn and so will four of the tiny clockwork bugs. You need to feed these bugs to the dreadnoughts every single time. The reason you do this is because if you do not, and a bug accidentally comes over to the Dreadnought, the Dreadnought's going to eat it and revive 25% of its HP and gain a damage buff. We feed it to them right off the bat, and the way we do this is we put our healers behind the northwest uh, tanking area so that all the bugs will come over and automatically be fed to the Dreadnought right off the bat. Now, after this phase, you're going to have more bugs and new mobs called Spinner Rooks. These spinner rooks are actually pretty dangerous because they put a skill on you called pox. Now what pox does is that whatever health you're at, when the pox hits you, is your new health pool until the pox wears off. That can be really dangerous if it hits your tanks. So what I like to do as a uh, physical DPS, if one is on me, I just run in a circle around the rook. What you need to do is you need to kill both spinner rooks during this phase, and once you're done with that, if the next phase has, has not begun yet, you need to start on one of the clockwork bugs. We like to number them so that all of our DPS knows which ones to focus. This way, once the next phase begins with a Dreadnought, a Soldier, and another Knight, you're not going to have as many Clockwork Bugs to worry about, and the Dreadnought won't be nearly as powerful when he only has three Bugs eaten instead of four. Now, for this phase, this Dreadnought will spawn in the northeast corner, whereas the other ones have been spawning in the northwest corner. Now, what you're going to do is all DPS is going to DPS the crap out of this Dreadnought while your off tank kites around the Knight and the Soldier. 
This is also another point where you need to pop all of your cooldowns to kill it as fast as possible. Because if you do not, in the next phase you're going to have another Dreadnought, as well as a Spinner Rook, as well as more Knights and more Soldiers. And it's just going to be a huge hassle to have two Dreadnoughts hitting one tank. Since, well, the tank usually has quite a bit of difficulty surviving with the one Dreadnought by himself. Now, the thing you need to know about the Soldier and the Knight is that while your off tank is kiting them, they actually will pull him back into their range. They also do a small AoE around them, so for all physical DPS that's close to these knights and soldiers, they're going to be getting cleaved for about a thousand hits, so be very aware of that. Once you destroy this Dreadnought, what we do in my raid is both the melee DPS stand off to the side, approximately at the east side, and wait for the Spinner Rook that's going to spawn. Now, we like to use our Limit Break on this Spinner Rook to kill it as fast as possible so we can go and help the other team with the other two Knights and now two Soldiers that's on the off tank. You need to be very careful though because even as a Dragoon, I'm being hit extremely hard by this Spinner Rook and I have to pop a lot of my defensive cooldowns as well as my heal just to survive. Now, as soon as you kill this Spinner Rook, hopefully you're range DPS will have at least one of the knights or one of the soldiers down so that once you go over you're not being cleaved for 4,000 every time they attack. So now that we've switched over we're killing the last knight. Once we kill this knight we're gonna switch over to the soldiers and finish off the soldiers. So what you need to realize is this is the final phase, the final fight. You need to pop all of your cooldowns here because if you cannot use blood for blood at the end of this phase and you're gonna see why here shortly. As soon as you get both these clockworks down the soldier and the knight, you're going to need it all stack behind this last dreadnought. The reason you're going to do this is because you're probably not going to kill this dreadnought fast enough before the enraged timer begins. Since we have two bards, one of our bards will sing to make sure that we have maximum mana regeneration that we possibly can. Because once the enrage begins, our healers are going to have to be AoE healing the entire fight. This AoE hits extremely hard. Anywhere between 1 and 1.5k every single time it explodes. At least on a Dragoon that is. Now if you would have had used Blood for Blood on that last part of the Dreadnought where it's enraged and all the AoE is going out on every single raid member, you'd be causing way undue stress upon your healers for no reason and you will more than likely die due to the absurd damage that's being done. Once you are able to heal through this last phase and kill this last Dreadnought, well congratulations, turn 4 is finally over and you can revel in your delicious sexy loot. Congratulations and I'll see you in phase 5. If you can make it there. There it goes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you complain about it? Why is it not AOEing yet? That's awesome. I want the heaters to use some mana. What the fuck? I'm not lazy, right? Good job. That was a nice one shot. Very much so. Well guys, that does it for turn 4. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to comment in the comments below on how sexy my Dragoon looked and how amazing this video was. If it wasn't as amazing as you thought it could have been, please tell me in the comments below. I love feedback. Also, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and share this video so I know you want more content from me in the future and to make this channel a much better channel. Well, I'm out for now guys. Have a good one.